En fait, ma journée, je le débite. Euh, je commence ma journée à. Je me réveille aux environs des 4 heures du matin. Et des 4 heures du matin, donc je me réveille, ça dépendrait aussi de schedule, de sorte de. Si l'endroit est à proximité de mon, de mon lieu, de, de, de ma maison, donc je me réveille peut-être à 4 heures, tantôt à 3h30, je prends mon petit déjeuner. C'est pas un petit déjeuner, mais pour éviter un peu la famine ou la faim au niveau. Au, à l'endroit de travail, je commence comme ça. Je travaille à Coca-Cola, je suis marchandise. Marchandise, j'ai obtenu ce travail il y a cela, une année de cela déjà. Et voilà, nous prenons le produit et on essaye de prendre ces produits qui sont installés par les conducteurs des tracks. On les prend, on les, on, on les installe dans des liés appropriés à, dans le supermarché. Voilà, c'est un quelque Vous faites un tout petit peu à, dans le moindre détail, c'est que j'exerce comme travail chez Coca-Cola. Voilà. Et je, souvent, je commence dès 5 h du matin jusque peut-être à midi, parfois 14 heures. Et des fois, j'ai trop de heures supplémentaires, voilà, c'est comme ça. Je rentre à la maison et je m'occupe de ma petite famille. Voilà. When coming here, the first thing that surprised me when getting on the plane, I uh, was surprised by the, the temperature which was in the, on the plane, which was very, very, very cold. And uh, it was very difficult to change it because that was set from the beginning. Then when I got out of the plane, it was even colder than in the plane. So I was acquainted step by step with this temperature to which I was not accustomed. So when you first arrive in the United States, you'll be picked up from the airport and there will be a case manager assigned to your case to pick you up and take you directly to your home. Nirifuraia na kupokelewa tulipokelewa kwa sababu tulipokelewa vizuri ni kwanza njuri kwa surprise kwa sababu sikutegemea kwamba marekani kuna watu wazuri na kuna watu wana roho nzuri lakini kweli tulifika tuliona kweli ilikuwa surprise ya mimi kuona kwamba nilipokelewa vizuri the first week when when families come here um, are pretty overwhelming um, when a family arrives we pick them up at the airport and bring them back to their housing sometimes it's a temporary housing situation sometimes it's a permanent housing situation um, and so we allow them to have a little bit of time if they're hungry to be able to sit down and eat it also gives us a time to visit and get to know each other just a little bit and then we go through the house to make sure that that there's a clear understanding of what all the appliances are, are used for. Um, and they can keep warm and they know how to be able to use the stove if, um, to prepare their food and, and those types of things. So this is the temperature control. What this does, it regulates the heat and it regulates the air conditioning. During the summer, during the winter, um, you'll turn this to heat. It gets very cold was first introduced to my, our house, our apartment here. I was very happy because uh, almost all the equipment was inside. We had the fridge, you could have the stove. We teach you how to use uh, some appliances in your home just to welcome you, to make you feel that you're not going to a desert you're going to a place where there's life. Then the following day, case manager will come to, to visit you, to do a home visit, to see how you're doing. And then there's a number of uh, appointments that come up. The first appointment will be the intake. The intake will be at, at the refugee agency office. You meet with your case manager again, you go over a lot of paperwork. They tell you the expectations 
or the, the services that we're offering, the timeline for the services. So when clients arrive, case managers get a lot of information about them prior to arrival. And so I understand how difficult it is to trust someone um, that you just meet. We want to earn um, families' trust. Um, we understand that that doesn't come easily or freely, and we really work to establish that. It's really important to have that good communication with your case manager. Self-sufficiency to the agency means that along this journey, we are teaching clients how to do things for themselves. Oh, you have your green card, your yeah. permanent residence, that's great. And in the end, we're here to help and educate. But in the end, we want families to be financially self-sufficient, which means they're not um, dependent on public programs and that all of the basic needs that they're learning along the way, um, that they're able to obtain those on their own. All right, it was good to see you. Good to see you too. All right, congratulations okay. on your green card. Thank you. Refugee who are coming from different camp or sites, when you get into the United States, you get uh, welcomed by a uh, refugee resettlement site where they're going to guide you through the whole process of getting help in terms of your health. When refugees arrive in the U.S., they come to our visit for a medical screening process. At the first appointment, we draw blood to check um, lab work on a lot of different, different things. They get immunizations and we ask them questions about their medical health history. They will also meet with one of our social workers to see if there are additional needs we can help with. Okay, I'd like to start by checking your blood pressure, Angela. Their second visit is with a medical doctor who will go over all of their lab results and do a full medical exam so that we can help them establish care with a doctor. Your blood pressure is 110 over 70, which is very They're gonna do some tests don't be afraid of those tests. They are normal tests, we've been through that. I mean, I'm talking to you, I've been through that as well. It's a TB test. Your children are gonna benefit from immunization, all the vaccine that they didn't get during the period that you've been in a camp or any site. And then they're gonna test for uh, intestinal uh, parasites, they're gonna test for hepatitis, just to prevent you from getting sick. So we have all refugees, when they arrive, meet with one of our social workers to see if there are any additional needs that we can help with. It's very common when people are um, arriving in a new country, in a new culture, to have a lot of different emotions that they are going through. This is true uh, particularly for people coming from areas of violence or people who've been separated from their home or families. So uh, there are ways that we can help and we have uh, people meet with the social worker to see what ways we can start to help them work through those emotions. If somebody is feeling sad or just feeling like overwhelmed with, with life here, I think it is um, an important thing to be able to reach out and look at what options are out there. And that does mean um, stepping sometimes out of your comfort zone. So we have a group of Congolese women who meet every day and they come to the office, they clock in, and every day is a different schedule, something's different on the schedule. So uh, three days of the week is usually practicing English, um, but it could be practicing communication skills, uh, it can also be talking about daycare options, so um, we might be discussing and problem solving, because a lot of the solutions are gonna come from inside. Njewe na vuye muri Burundi, nda shika muri Amerika. Najenda mugabo nari mfise nari mufakazi ndaje nabana batandatu abahungu bane nabakobwa babiri We ra America if you say if ami nyinshi zitandukana ama nationalite ukasanga twese tuhuriye ngaha ariko kubera agence ibazana ibashira hamwe ibahamagara ku mashure kabashirira mashure mwigako 
kwigisha ikingereza mukaza mukasanga mu wese muhuriye hagya kubera mutafisi uriri mirumwe ariko kavuga ingorane yawe undi akakubwira nanje migukya nanje migukya aja serero irabashira hamwe ikababwira mu buzima nga muri America ni gukya ni gukya nifise ingene yo kubafasha irabafasha mwese ikabareka ko ubuzima bwa muri America ni gukya njewe nga muri America handu bantwaye narose umushisi ava muri South Africa ariko mu Congo mani yavuye mu bukavu yashise nga muri America ndamubonye ko nabonye umutoyi wanje cyangwa umukuru wanje gushika nubu niyo nchuti fise nga muri America niwe mama niwe mutoyi wanje ingorane yose ndayimutura Congo is a multi ethnic uh, country we have over 250 ethnic uh, groups as the leaders, we are trying to help people understand that we all can live together as a community. And we, if we decide to resettle in the United States of America, we can live here peacefully and build a safer community. We've done a great job here trying to advocate and trying to bring this uh, social awareness, you know, trying to tell people to preach them a message. The message we preach them is unity and love. So we have to love others, we have to accept others. It doesn't matter who they are. Ready? Pour moi, pour les enfants, pour l'école, ici aux États-Unis, c'est bien. Parce que le matin, il y, y a le bis qui vient prendre les enfants. Et puis les enfants partent à l'école dans, dans les bis. Ils reviennent aussi dans les bis. Et, et puis, bon, pour moi, ici, les études aux États-Unis, c'est bien. C'est bien. Parfois, l'enfant ne part pas à l'école. Il y a l'école qui appelle les parents. Mais pourquoi l'enfant n'est pas parti? So, children, they don't grow by themselves. Parents have a responsibility. Back in Africa, where you come from, you know, children can be raised by anybody in the community. They belong to the village, they belong to the society or the community, which is not the case here. Over here, parents need to put some work. They need to insist being there for their children, communicating the value, reminding their children. Unless they do that, the children may end up in bad company. Uh, many families come from countries where it's sort of um, understood that when children are in school, it's the teacher's responsibility to take care of them. But here in the U.S., we really believe that parents should be partners in their children's education. And we want parents to feel welcome in the school building at any time. And so we encourage them to meet their teachers, to come to parent-teacher conferences, to ask questions about their children's homework. If they don't understand something that's going on in school, we really want them to come and, and ask for help um, on understanding what's going on in the classroom. Moi, à l'école, j'aime beaucoup de choses parce qu'on mange bien. Il n'y a pas de tribalisme. Tous les gens là-bas sont mes amis. On joue. On... Donc, toutes les choses on fait là-bas. Donc, tout, tout j'aime. L'Amérique, j'aime beaucoup. Parce que tous les gens, les gens sont fris ici. Yeah. J'ai des amis, des blancs, des noirs, ça. Tout ça. Tous sont mes amis, c'est mal. Donc, euh, <rire> si à propos des amis à Bora, il y en a beaucoup des amis et ils sont simples. Je l'aime, ils m'aiment aussi. Yeah, comme ça. My favorite subject, it's like mathematics, uh, history, biology, and the critical reading. English right now is a little better, but the first one is coming to America, my English will be a little level. My advice, if somebody needs to come to America, they need to know English, to study English, because to America, English is very important. Well, adjusting to school was hard, I won't lie, because 
in Africa, you go, you stay in one class, and uh, you don't like move around. You just sit in the one class. The teachers come in and goes out. I'll be honest, I was like late, like the first like week, I was late every day because I had to like find my classes. Well, it was hard getting used to. Uh, miss, I missed my family a lot, and uh, me being separated from them, it was, that was really hard because that's all I had. Like, my brother was like my parent since I was like two. Well, my advice, uh, tell another foster kids that are coming here, is that study hard. That's obviously number one, and focus. That's number two, and then just like interact with everybody. When you go to school, you don't be like sit by yourself at the lunch table and just like go in with everybody and introduce yourself. And yeah, that's the most like that's the advice I give to everybody. Ask questions too. Kuwa mama tofauti ya kuwa mama Africa na tofauti ya kuwa mama Marekani tofauti ya apa Mar Afrika tulikuwa tunalea mtoto akifanya kosa unapiga fimbo kabisa bako na lokota fimbo na chapa kabisa unapiga chapa au chakula unamuima au unamfukuza sasa Marekani sio vile uwezi kupiga mtoto hata mtoto akifanya kosa uwezi mpiga kuna adhabu kidogo naweza kumpatia kusema kaa pale lakini uwezi kumpiga mtoto. Uwezi kuacha mtoto kama vile Afrika tulikuwa tunaacha mtoto unaenda unaenda sokoni unaenda kuuza vitu tangu asubuhi unaacha watoto nyumbani unarudia jioni hapa haiwezekani. Often times I hear in the United States um, children aren't disciplined. Children are disciplined in a different way. We absolutely want children to respect their parents. We want children to listen to their parents. Physical violence is not an acceptable form of discipline. And there's lots of different ways that you can discipline children. So the United States has a great deal of laws and the expectation that people know what all of those are upon arrival um, is just that, that's, not a, that's not a very realistic expectation. So in our orientations, we actually start um, talking about the laws that we've seen clients have issues with in the past. So examples of that would be domestic violence. Domestic violence means violence in the home between um, members of a household. And that's a pretty simple um, definition of what domestic violence is and having the understanding that it isn't tolerated to any degree here in the United States. Either you renew your mind in order to adapt to this life or it will bring you trouble in the home. I take an example, husband and wife. Most of the women coming from uh, Africa, they stay home. They are stay home moms, they raise children. In the United States, they have an opportunity to go to school, to work, and bring an income. And some of the men who have not renewed their mind, they will see that with a bad eye. That can bring trouble in the family. So we try to counsel the husband to renew their mind. <laughs> muhagira bana abakuru batatu bari yuhagira nanjye abandi batatu nkabuhagira ubwo bose nkabasokana bamwe nkabageza ku ishuri abandi nkabakatana namaguru nkabageza kuri deke yankongera nkagaruka nkafata bus nkajya ku ishuri majority of people who are are single parents and they have to go to work they take their children to a daycare and so a daycare is a facility that, um, that will take care of their children during working hours. Usually children will be there from 8 to 10 hours a day. I was told that I was a kid, 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 I was
iyo geza aha ngaha ugira ubwoba muri wowe ukavuga ati buzima sinza bushobora kubyuka kujya aha ukabyuka kujya aha ukabyuka kujya ariko aho bigere ya nge maze kumenyera nundi wese nazamubwira akihangana kuko ubuzima bwo mu mugi buragoye kubyuka ugenda ukabyuka ugenda ariko buhora ugenda ubimenyera kugeza ubu nge ndumva bimaze kuba byiza sinke e biroroshye kuko iyo maze gusoka muri deke ya abakuru mbira bakuru abakuru bafate barumuna babo kugira ngo hatagira ujya mu muhanda imodoke kamunyonga kuko nange mbafite umwana mutoya child care is definitely one of the biggest challenges to uh, self sufficiency especially for single mothers obviously uh, but also families in general um, and in the Congolese pop population in particular, we found that childcare has been a challenge to being able to attain a job and keep a job. Hey. The expectation is that, that you will be working and you'll be providing for your family, paying for your rent, paying for utilities, paying for the food. And so really to be able to move and function within quality of life in the United States, employment is a huge essential part of that. Jose nzanye nga muri America yarando ndi ya kazi ndaronga kazi ku hotel ndagenda sa tatu ndagaruka sa chenda cyangwa sa 10 ndagakunze kubera niko kazi ka kafasha mu buzima kurera abana kuri hinzu akazi kose kubera ndushobora kwanga kazi kandi nubo buzima ubuzima bwanga muri America na kazi ndakindi bwa mbere ngiye ko hakora nabonye ko nakazi kakomeye kubera nakazi nibo bwa mbere nagakoze sinakamenyereye ariko ubu maze kukamenyera kubera bwa mbere narakoze kushikaho ndashika muhira ndavuga ngiyewe uyu munsi nzofa sinjo bora kuvyuka mu gitondo kubera nikazi kakomeye hello ku munsi bagwa ibi chambre 20 Ishambre imwe ibamo bitanda bibiri cyangwa bitatu Nibyo bitanda bitatu byose ubisase kukuramo maburangeti ushiramo amashuka atatu iburangeti uheza hagya ukagenda mu bathroom koza bathroom koza handu hose kura hano nitundu twishi upangamo tumayisume 10 mayisume gute utabishobora kandi utabimenyereye kura na ma modele yo kugira mayisume kuvuga ko uyagire neza ingero shobora kugira agashugwe ushaka umukiriya nabo bibone aboye ko mwabigize neza ukasanga bigya ndagenda ibimwe ndabi ndibagira ko babigira gukyo ndavamo ndigendera kubera ni byinshi cyane mu mutwe ariko ubu ndashimira imana kubera maze kubishobora kandi ndanakimwe bimbira no kubabara ndava hagya ndumva ko fise inguvu ndarakimwe bimbarira bwa mbere niyo byangoye gusa ari kuvu nashimye imana ndabishohora What we do here is we process glasses we cut bottles and they are being polished ground washed and basically giving the best product to the customers we can. We have several refugees in here at all times. They come in and uh, they have a program and they're here for X amount of time. What makes them successful is they get confident, mainly confident on what they're doing and understanding they're doing something totally brand new they've never done in their life and that brings their confidence up so when they leave here they're confident in any other job they're going to be working at. I have yet to find a client that isn't willing to work hard. Most people come here 
having done jobs that uh, are more manual than most Americans are used to, they're not, they're not afraid of hard work and that's a good thing and demonstrating that uh, is important. The willingness to take on additional responsibilities on the job, not just do only the things they're told but be proactive and say what else needs to be done. If they do that, there are more opportunities for them to get additional hours, to get a different job, to get promoted. Once they've had uh, a few months of experience and have demonstrated these things, they can be looking for other jobs. Moi, moi personnellement, j'ai n'ai pas trouvé de difficultés pour l'obtention de mon premier travail et de mon second. J'ai trouvé ça avec facilité. Et déjà, la seule chose qui m'a essayé, qui m'a compliqué un tout pipé la tâche, c'était par rapport à l'intégration. Et quand je parle de l'intégration, je vois la facilité de la langue anglaise. Vous savez, moi, personnellement, je suis arrivé dans ce pays. Vous allez remarquer peut-être dans cette interview, je ne parle que le français. Il n'y a pas trop d'incursion de la langue anglaise. Pourquoi Parce que c'est une des premières fois dans ma vie de parler la langue anglaise. Okay. What job is this? Wash. Wash. Is it? Oui. 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 I'm an ESL instructor um, and at our center we teach um, about seven different levels including seniors, uh, citizenship class and work styles class. And for the past few weeks we've been teaching um, housing and so we've been talking about different chores we do in the home. One of the responsibilities refugees have coming to the U.S. is they're required to take English classes. So right at the beginning they're learning those skills, uh, the English skills they need, but having speaking English is not necessary for employment. Uh, many of the employers we have have multiple refugee clients on staff, so they'll have people that already speak their language on staff. Everybody goes through the English class. We have three classes every week. It does get a little bit of challenging on my part because they are trying to understand a lot of it is just hand motion and I have to show them and then they learn. We find that many of the employers that we work with actually are excited to have refugees on the staff and interested in what refugees have to say about the countries they came from, the, the culture in general. So it's, it's a good positive experience all the way around. When we came here, it was difficult for my family and I to live the good life in the United States. Because of English, I have to go to school to learn English. And I did. I learned English as a second language through my college for one year. I didn't stop about learning only English as a second language and I took a test to go to regular college to continue to learn English, and I'm still learning English today. If you want to find the good job, if you want to find the good opportunity, go to school, learn English, no matter what you're going through, don't give up, still learning English. To open my own account today in the United States, I have to learn English. I was working for Morrison Security for four years. I worked for uh, many companies. I got skill. I got experience. Today, I provide job security and detective job for 50 people. That is great. I'm so happy for that. I opened my own business, which is Lion Eye Security and Detective Services. Je suis serviteur de Dieu, pasteur ou apôtre, ici aux États-Unis d'Amérique. Pendant plusieurs années, et nous servons Dieu et nous recevons tous les bien-aimés qui arrivent de l'Afrique et puis partout, et nous les encadrons spirituellement. 
Nous avons des programmes pour recevoir les gens qui viennent, comme les réfugiés, et puis d'autres personnes viennent par Divi. Et vous serez à l'aise parce qu'il y a une grande communauté qui est là, et même l'église, même la communauté de Congolais ou de gens qui se réunissent ensemble pour votre encadrement spirituel. Merci beaucoup. The United States is a country of opportunities. You know, uh, the refugees that are coming here to the country, you do not need to envy others. There is a time for everything. The way up is down. You start down and you go up. Anybody that has a good work ethic, if you work hard, you can have a good life. You can prosper in this country. For me, I can say that to have the patience, the faith, and everything will be good. It's not easy. It's not easy for a person to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning if he didn't have the habit. It's not easy for a person to work at the rate, to work quickly at the rate, to return to the house, to take care of certain hours of the day. C'est pas facile peut-être pour une personne après l'école, après le travail, d'y s'y rendre à l'école pour un certain programme de cours d'anglais, pour l'intégration facile aux états unis Donc tout cela, ça demande de la volonté, la volonté. Et quand vous en avez, vous arrivez à quelque chose aussi d'assez concrète, je pense. And some of us who got the chance to cross the other side of the bridge, we want to go to America, to come to America, not just to eat McDonald's, to eat hamburger, to work and stay home, work at Walmart and then stay home raising kids, but at least to be also a um, contributing factor in this wonderful society. For refugees who are coming over, they have to understand that uh, we have a saying, a saying here in the United States which, which talks about the American dream, and you can achieve that, but you have to work very hard. Some people think that once I get in America, man will be coming from every corner and I will be rich all of a sudden. Uh, that doesn't happen, but uh, slowly by slowly, uh, some people can integrate and achieve whatever they want to achieve. Mm -hmm.